long, it almost lunchtime. It's a bit odd setting here, so usually I would be standing somewhere here. I guess that won't work. So um, I'll be talking about um, Spiva, so if I get 30 seconds, I'd say this is it. Fortunately, we have a bit more time, so um, Spiva is an archaeological database uh, for Eastern Alps in early medieval period. Actually, I'm going to move a bit here. Um, it's a database of sites, graves, and artifacts. Um, it uh, includes description, location, chronology, literature, all the normal things you'd expect. Um, and it has advanced search capabilities, so advanced nowadays can mean many things. This is not so advanced. It just means that it offers structured multi-level multi criteria search and also unstructured search. It also has map and it's available in several languages. So Eastern Alps, early medieval period, sites, graves, artifacts. Um, its main focus is actually on literature, so it's a place you start your research, um, and it's also available in English. It's been developed since 1987, and this is how it looked online since 2000 till 2016. So now we've um, moved. Yeah, what is the question? Where do I find the thing to the general direction? Um, we've moved to an Arches platform. Oops. Yeah, yeah, no, but, but uh, um, Yeah, okay, so it's built on Arches platform. Um, Arches is, a, is an open source, geospatially enabled software platform purposefully built for cultural heritage inventory and management developed by the Vieti Conser Conservation Institute and World Monuments Fund. Um, okay, so... You might have to get closer. Um, this is the major events. It's not the point. We're not going to um, pick up on all of these. Um, the main things here are that it's been developed for a while, since 2004, as you can see, and it's still been actively developed, as you can see, the last update came um, a few, just a few months ago. Um, it includes some or all of the standards you'd, uh, um, you'd expect. I'm not going, going to go into details for several reasons. One of those is that I don't know the details. But those of you who do can quickly sit through and see that yeah, it includes it, it is based on CDUC CRM. Um, I don't think it includes the archaeological extension though. And um, since I'm not affiliated with Arches, they did the best to see how they describe themselves. They describe themselves as innovative, purpose-built, open source, standards-based, versatile and community-driven so um, software platform. Okay. Um, so, uh, for Spiva, we've made some updates. Um, one was uh, we upgraded multilingual options, so there are um, multilingual compatibilities built in, but we needed uh, a bit more advanced. Um, we updated the search form and we upgraded the map. For, for example, we enabled the um, export. Um, we've also made a custom um, program for data migration. Um, why? Arches does enable you to, to use it as your um, main database. But, you know, we're archaeologists, we're conservative. So we didn't want to give up our access um, server-based solution. So we just use Arches for as our front end, but we still keep our data in access and we migrate the updates um, when necessary. Um, okay. Since the lunch. Okay, maybe it's there. Um, so what's the most important thing? 
for us, so um, of arches. Um, the most important thing for us is that um, we were able to merge structured data search and tree tag search in a unified search engine. Um, now, this is a boring old school Microsoft Access form, and uh, most of you immediately um, correlate this to a lot of work. To get, to get your data into structured form, it takes a lot of input. Of course, you can reap the benefits after, after you've done it, because the search is more precise. Um, and also, being archaeologists, we're familiar with this, so this is just uh, um, an image from a printed book, actually, um, with the catalog of, of some graves. Um, and uh, the most important thing um, for us was that you are now able to search um, the, um, the back um, the backend tool is Elasticsearch. So with Elasticsearch, you search through all of your data. Um, and this is um, our custom built advanced search that, of course, requires the knowledge of our data structure. But um, when you get familiar with it, it's a really powerful, um, powerful tool. Um, now we move on to Ariadne and Zbiva. So, um, this um, latest installation of Zbiva was indirectly funded by Ariadne, which means that the um, Ariadne project um, enables, enabled us to free some of the resources that we were able to give towards this. Um, it incorporates results of um, some of the results of Ariadne, um, not, um, not the actual solutions as um, the tool, but rather, uh, more, the most important for us was um, users' needs report. Um, and also, it's uh, written here 100% built on the Ariadne community. The Ariadne community was the thing that um, gave us inspiration to even go this way. It, uh, we gained um, advice from people just talking, um, seeing them on the meetings, and it was really, it's one of those intangible things of these projects. Um, it wouldn't have happened without Ariadne. Um, this, is, um, this is a shot, a screenshot from Ariadne user's needs report. Um, it's very useful if you're building your own tools to go through the entire report, I think. Um, but for us, the key message that we took was that what we're actually building is a tool for ourselves. We cannot compete with all the Googles and Facebooks for attention of casual browsers, nor do we want to. We know that we're only going to get archaeologists that are really focused on our subject, on the early medieval period of Eastern Alpine area, and they will be prepared to, to put in some work to familiarize with the tool. Um, and not good reasons. Um, so, um, and this is the, the design, the design uh, motto, if you will, that we, um, or the design approach rather, that we took. Um, now, let's have a look at the um, SBO itself. So, it has um, several tabs on top. So, this is uh, sites, um, this is graves. Now, in German, you can see that um, it's, so this is not graveyards or cemeteries, it's graves, it's individual graves. And obviously, there's no continuous coverage of it, nor is one plant, nor is one physical. So these are just selected cemeteries on which we work, or some other, or other people work on and want to have it. Uh, they can upload it in this in this tool. Uh, this is one example: the uh, one cemetery which has 2,926 um, graves. And this perhaps is a good point to. Um, to show the, our design approach um, in practice. So when you, the original arches will, will return five hits for each search. And it happens in a flash. But of course, we know that uh, the way we work, we will have, okay, not um, 3,000 hits, that's the entire cemetery, but very often we will have 100, if not hundreds hits, and we want to search through those. So, 
we wanted, we said, uh, we just want all of the kids um, to show, but this really slows the engine down, so after a long of difficult negotiation with uh, our developer, we came up with the number 50. So now 50 hits um, will be shown, um, and this takes, this takes up to about 3 seconds. Um, which again, you know that for modern standards, the way we used to use the web, most of the time it, it don't get a return in 2 seconds, you just go to another site. But with this tool, you know, you're not going to find this information anywhere else, so you will have to speak with us for 3, for three seconds. Um, okay, this is um, Artifacts, now a Slovenian interface, um, and it's um, the same as with Graves, uh, no continuous coverage, obviously, but there is already more than 10,000 um, artifacts in the database. Um, and this is just a general net view where all, uh, on the, all the data is, um, uh, you can search through it through a map. Um, now I'm going to just show a few case studies, they're really short, of um, how we, we used uh, the database. So we're in Grand Cemetery and we're looking for, uh, we're using the Cryptex search and we're looking for a uh, um, camp pendant. Um, this is a um, Slovenian word, so we're at um, the root of the Slovenian word for it. But um, as I mentioned, now we are searching through um, text-based catalog. And this includes uh, some catalog was written in 1960s and some of it was written two years ago. So there are different terms that are used. So um, to find one type of object, I need to search for another type for another term. But Arches does not um, does not include the or search. It just automatically includes and search, um, or you can click it click on it and it's not. Um, so uh, apparently it was too much work to include or, but we did to do something else. So we can now export. Um, our um, hits. Um, so these, these are, this is the other word for the same uh, type of artifact. We got our hits and we can export the hits. Um, we get a CSV um, file. You will know you can import it in your own GIS or you can change it a bit. Um, but right now we're going to just import it back and thus we got the end result. So we, we searched for two terms, task or rather. Um, and the result here is uh, okay. Um, yeah, um, this is the um, uh, same process, but we're looking here for buttons, tilt and badges, and brass or um, post medieval um, artifacts. And the result is that we can see that early medieval cemetery is actually. Um, spread uh, much um, bigger than the uh, late medieval or late medieval um, yeah, cemetery. Um, same thing with another type of object. This is a specific type of finger ring. We search for it. Um, now we search for a specific type of hair pendant. Um, and we can see the chronological dynamics of the, of the cemetery. Um, Another example, squatting face, facet, it's um, a specific um, injury to the bones that's uh, connected to uh, squatting or kneeling. Um, and we can see that the results are grouped very neatly here. Now, they could be just people that like to squat, but what's more likely is that they were kneeling a lot, perhaps during the prayer, and that this is a special area of cemetery for them. Now, all of this is very basic. It looks very simple, and you may be asking yourself, I can do this in my GIS or M. No, that's the thing. Remember, we're still just look, searching through a text base, so we just written a book, we just dumped the information in the database, um, and um, the GIS database that we aim to build to do this type and more advanced research, it's still in the building, and these slides are um, I don't know if I can admit this from 216. So, um, and this is very important, um, important fact. So, just another example of um, a special um, seashells that were also an important pilgrim sign 
and they're all the uh, one of the concentration is north of the altar. I don't know if you know this, but in medieval times, so the whole point of being buried was so that when the day of final reckoning, how is it called? The Yeah, when the judgment day comes and Jesus comes down, it will take all that were buried. Um, and the Bible does say that everybody who deserves it will go to heaven, but you know better say than sorry. The Jesus, will, Jesus will probably come down to church altar, so the closer to the altar you're buried, the better your chances. So one can imagine that the most pious people were buried closest to the, to the altar. Um, so the, what we learned from this database is um, it enabled us a shorter data preparation time, it enables us intuitive use, which means more time for analysis, which means better results. Um, but there are also some other um, practical experience that we draw from it. So for us, open source is not cheaper than commercial because we don't have our own developers and for all these custom build changes, it cost it costed at the end exactly the same amount as we um, as the first commercial offer that, uh, that we got. Um, also, web application needs constant technical support and maintenance, which people here are aware of. But mostly, people in the budgeting um, sec sections of our institutions are maybe are not. So it cannot be project funded, and we've seen this today. All the excellent examples we've seen. They have some, some type of permanent funding behind them. And uh, okay, this is more an, an, an annoyance for us because we're not computer people, we're not developers, so for us it's a uh, non-user friendly export is a problem. Um, so please visit us at Viva and although this is uh, not this, does, this view does not necessarily reflect the view of the European Commission. I think that Ariadne School, it helped us a lot, and we're looking forward to Ariadne Plus. Thank you.